Amen. Everybody, please bow your heads as I uh, pray. Once again, Lord, we, we thank you for the opportunity to be in your house today, Father. And help us to not take it for granted. Lord. Because there's so many other places where we can be. Lord, this morning I'm asking that you be with each individual that is in this place. Lord, give them peace. Help them to feel your love. Lord. Reassure them. Remind them. There's a um, several biblical characters that I resonate with. Um, no.
If you are familiar with the story of Joseph, you know the event that came to pass that caused him to end up in Egypt. If you turn to chapter 37, Turn to chapter 37. You can go ahead and turn there if you want to, but I'm going to read. In chapter 37. So, 37 verses, 23 and 24. It says, And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water. Joseph's brothers wanted to kill him originally. But they decided to just sell him. So here's Joseph having all these dreams and God giving him these dreams and he goes to his brothers like, look man, I just had me another dream, brother. <laughs> Talking about right here. 
In chapter 37, verse 25, I want you all to notice something with me. Notice something. Joseph is thrown into the pit, my brother. Chapter 37, verse 25, and his brother sat down and ate food like they didn't just do anything drastic. Chill. And the text says, this is his brothers now. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And the text says, and behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery, balm, and myrrh, going to carry it to Egypt. We become so good at noticing the bad that we cannot see the good. Is it just me that immediately, almost immediately after Joseph is thrown into the pit, God makes a way. God is in motion. All time, right? Once Joseph arrives to Egypt, he was sold to a man named Potiphar. One thing we gotta understand about Potiphar that he was not just any, you know, old Joe Schmo off the street. was an officer of the film. The captain of a god, an Egyptian, in other words, this man was close to the Pharaoh. And if you look in chapter 39, verse 2, it says, he's with Potiphar now, it says, and the Lord was with Joseph. For several years, Joseph was living the good life as part of his servant. It says, and his master, in verse 3 says, and his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person, and it says he was well favored. Forgive me, but I said, Lord, I'm still skeptical now. I still don't truly believe and grasp that Joseph was sent to Egypt by him. In chapter 39, verse 20, it says, And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison, in confinement. Have you ever been in a situation where you felt like you were in prison? Separated from the people, separated from your loved ones, separated from old friends, you were in a prison. So here we have Joseph falsely a 
accused. One thing if you know you did something that you wasn't supposed to do. You can at least come, you can at least say to yourself, man, I deserve this. But my sister Joseph didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, in 39 verse 9, it says, There is none greater in this house than I, neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, talking about Potiphar now, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph knew God. Didn't want to sin against God. He's trying to do things right. But still, is falsely accused and placed in prison. I looked at this text and it deepened my skepticism. God makes St. Joseph to know each other. <laughs> I'm not believing that. He didn't see that. But I want you to Look at this with me, though. Yeah. Not long after Joseph was in prison, the Pharaoh became angry at a couple of his officers, the chief butler and the baker. And the text tells us that these people went to the same place, were sent to the same place Joseph was. And I'm sure. If you notice in chapter 40, verse 5, so they're sent to the same place Joseph was, and if you look in chapter 40, verse 5 to 19, it says, they both dreamed a dream. I don't know how many of you know that it doesn't matter what anybody does to you, that God is able to put you in position. Saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? 
And they said unto him, We have dreamed the dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Joseph, and said to him, In, in my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded in her blossom, and so on and so forth. I could keep going. But Joseph interpreted those two dreams, and because he, he was able to interpret the dreams, that put him in position for the next thing that God was about to do. The chief butler and the baker are released from prison. Before they left, Joseph said, said to the chief butler, man, look, man, don't forget about me, my brother. <laughs> don't forget me, man. Look out for me, man. Tell Pharaoh, man, you know, you know, guy in the prison here, you know. You know, hopefully let me out this time, man. The chief baker's killed, like the uh, vision said, the dream said. And the butler is there. But if the text tells us that the butler forgot. Go, Bob, go. Oh, you wanna do me like that, my brother? I looked out for you, man. But the text says the butler forgot. And it's not until two years afterwards. Uh, 
Let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be yada 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 and the thing in verse 37 it says and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants and Pharaoh said unto the servants can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of God is and Pharaoh said unto Joseph for as much as God hath showed thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Pharaoh makes Joseph, who was, he's 30 now, who was betrayed by his brothers about 13 years back, over a decade. Wow. Get that into your mind. It's been some time. And now, after he was betrayed by his brothers years ago, somehow he became second in command to the Pharaoh of Egypt. <laughs> and it says in verse 31, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand. Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his Come on, man. Come on. This is the same brother. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land. And the Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's table. And arrayed him in vessels of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in his second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee! God will put you in possession. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh. And without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name up a knife, and he, and he gave him to wife as, man, 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 pretty much, man, God is hooking Joseph up. <laughs> Got the hook up. So the famine hits. The famine hits. And his brothers, because of his brother, it affected his brothers, it affected his whole family, right? Now listen to this. Now his brothers, the same betrayed him over a decade back now they don't know it yet have to rely on him well, why do we always feel so inclined to fight our own battles when God is so mighty I was still skeptical. <laughs> I know it don't sound like <laughs> But I still was skeptical. And I said, I don't care what's going on in this situation. I don't care how he's being blessed. I don't believe that God sent you to Egypt, my brother. His brothers come to him. Right? And there is a text 
that I want you to look at. There's a text I want you to look at. Thank you, all right. Watch this. If you look in verse chapter 42, we almost done. Verse chapter 42, verse 6. It says, And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came to him. Came. This is critical right here. This is critical. That's going to show us that God sent Joseph. And bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. God did not send him. Joseph is wrongly accused and placed into prison. God, you did not send him. Joseph is even placed into a position where he can be second in command to the Pharaoh. God, I still don't believe you sent him. <laughs> but then his brothers come. And the text tells us that they bowed before Joseph. And that reminded me of a text. And this text is in chapter 37. <laughs> Back to the beginning. Where Joseph was like, here to his brothers, I pray you. And it says, in chapter 37, verse 7, it says, For behold, we were buying and sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance or bowed down or bowed down to my sheep. was showing Joseph of what was about to come to pass. Or years before it happened, God showed me, revealed to Joseph, this is what's going to take place in your life. This is my plan for your life. This is my purpose for your life. And when God said something is If God 
says it is going to happen, it is going to happen, it just so happens that your enemies are the very ones that are going to help you get there. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh, shoot. But it was God's plan in motion. 
ocean, my brother? Get hurt. And we cut people. 
people off. I'm never going to deal with that person again. That person hurt me. What if God is causing you to advance so that when you come back, you can help that person? That's right. So what do you do? You trust the God to heal your heart, and you continue to push forward. Yes, you do. All right. Forgive them, Lord, for they know what they do. That's what Jesus said. That's what your Lord and Savior said. We are supposed to look like him, right? Yes. Forgive them. My God.
It is finished. God has been placing me in position as the book. And I said, God, you are faithful. It was rough. Like it was rough for Joseph. But what God said would happen, happened. Amen. So I hope everybody enjoys their uh, Sabbath. I hope that you were blessed. I hope that it was a word that you can not only take along with you, that you not only take along with you uh, during this next week, but for longer than that. <laughs> God bless you and have a Sabbath.